Ominous rocks, killer robots, people in mortal danger. Seriously, aren't you tired of this? Fatigue is a distraction from our purpose. As are complaints. Oh, I haven't begun to complain yet. Ouch! Ugh. Now I'm complaining. Focus, Sagira. Reach for the sky, big guy. Need help? Again? I've got it, thank you. Well? Osiris? What, what did you see? Slow down! Wait... I thought I... Oh, sh... You know, I can't help but notice that even with all of reality to explore, you keep picking the places where they shoot at us. We can't stay here. If the Vex succeed, it's the end of everything. Sagira, we can see your light. You have to go. Nope, not leaving you. Without me, there's no coming back. If I don't stop the Vex, there won't be anything to come back to. I'm doing this for the both of us. Don't you even... <laughs> about the characters that we will meet on this journey. Mm -hmm. um, let's begin with Osiris. Uh, we've got a slideshow put together, and uh, these, these faces are far more interesting to look at than ours, so let's, uh, let's share some screen time with Osiris. Talk to me about this character and what we did to sort of reach past all of the conjecture and theorizing on the, on the part of the players who may have followed in his tracks to the lighthouse sure. and bringing him to life, as it were. Um, so I, early on, uh, when we, we talked about Osiris, so Osiris, take a step back. Osiris, we've, we've talked about Osiris for years mm -hmm. in, within the studio, and this was our first chance to really put him front and center and show just how much of a badass he is. And I mean, we just saw like what he's capable of doing with like Dawn Blade, and like that's ridiculous. But we, more so, we wanted to get into the notion of how he is as an exiled vanguard leader, as he is the. The, the greatest warlock that's ever lived. Um, all these things, plus what he's been doing, his obsession with the Vex, why he's on Mercury, these are all things that we brought into how we, we came up with the aesthetic for him. Real early on, we made the commitment, we wanted to make sure he was uh, Middle Eastern, mm -hmm. and he's actually even voiced by Oded Fair, which is freaking great. Mm -hmm. um, and as you, if you look at the character and you go back and you take a look at the, the, the trailer that we were just showing, yep. um, and you start to step through it, you're gonna notice a lot of clues about uh, like chronology and, and, and how Osiris continues to work with the gear that he currently has and when he was exiled, what he took with him. Mm -hmm. um, there's, so, a oh. good look at his, uh, there's a good look at his gear right now. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, when you, if you take a look at it uh, and you start to kind of sweep through it, you're going to notice uh, right off the bat those bracers. Those bracers look a lot like bracers of old, but clearly something's changed. Um, and this is obviously to like exemplify the notion of, of him exploring the Vex and learning what he can do to modify and take Vex technology and make it his own. And when you are exiled from the tower, you can't go back and decode your engrams. <laughs> no, no. Uh, but uh, before his exile, he was a powerful figure in the tower. I mean, he was essentially their commander, yes. right? Absolutely. He was Zavala before Zavala. Zavala. Yep. So, uh, so some of the other themes that we definitely le are leaning into, absolutely we want to lean into like Egyptian mythology. Yes. So you're starting to see like even around like, like the neck bangle or even the headgear, we're starting to like tease out some of those aspects that are definitely Egyptian. Mm -hmm. um, all these things that that pay homage back into like that mythology of just how great of a character Osiris is. Shout out to one of your peers. This is a piece of concept art created by whom? Ryan Gitter. Ryan Gitter. Yeah. Awesome work, man. Mad Thank artist. you, Ryan. And then uh, this view of Osiris's gear is, uh, this was what, the 
the cinematic model? Right. Mm -hmm. This is the model that we just saw uh, in that in the, in the prologue that we were just looking at. Yeah. Um, this is our our high res uh, cinematic model. So this is where we can see all of the the small fine details mm -hmm. that that are there. Um, we also have uh, the in game model that you're going to be able to see at some other point, and I'll leave that as a secret. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, we, as indicated, we've got three streams, including this one, before it's time to play. So there'll be a lot of opportunities to dive deeper into mm -hmm. uh, all the different aspects of Destiny that mm -hmm. brings players to the game. Some, I was going to say, a perfect timing. Perfect segue. So one of the other things that's also great about uh, being able to take Osiris and pull him out of the tower and, and then have him be exiled and move forward is, is his ghost and what his ghost looks like. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is Sagira. Um, I, I don't want to steal Christine's thunder because this is a really special moment for us. So I'm going to let Christine I am talk about Sagira. Super, super excited about Sagira. She is the first ghost that you hear in the franchise other than the player's ghost. Yes. She's the first female ghost. She's got a name. She's got opinions. She has a lot of opinions. Mm -hmm. She sometimes thinks the Guardians, including Osiris, take themselves too seriously. No. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it is a lot of fun looking at the world. Mm -hmm. through her eyes. And when we, uh, when we reach Sagira in our timeline as mm -hmm. players, uh, she has been, as we saw at the end of that prologue, sort of lost. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, we mentioned that Oded Fair plays Osiris. Mm -hmm. uh, who is the vo voice of Sagira? Marina Baccarin. Yeah. From Firefly, from Firefly and Gotham, Gotham and Homeland and Deadpool, Deadpool, Deadpool and everything. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome, <laughs> awesome talent to bring into the story. And uh, this image comes from what? This, this is uh, one of the shots that we are mm -hmm. previs for uh, some of the prologue. And as you, as you start to look at her, like, we really wanted to pull out some of those, those mm -hmm. sassy aspects of, mm -hmm. of the character and bring that into the visuals. Yep. So you'll see her not only as, as the shell itself, but then also in her performance and how she interacts with Osiris. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, Can1245 says, another Firefly star. Bungie's got a Firefly fetish. We're I think trying we're, to collect them. We're, yeah. Yeah, we're basically like collecting every cast. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> we're, we're getting close. Uh, so uh, Osiris was once uh, a teacher, a mentor, a commander in mm -hmm. the tower. And uh, Osiris's favorite pupil, yep. mm -hmm. uh, teacher's pet, Ikora Ray. Uh, yes, my own favorite vanguard, Ikora Ray, uh, mm -hmm. makes a return to this story. Uh, from an art direction standpoint, uh, you haven't iterated on perfection. No. Nope. Her, her armor and her character is as we remember it. Right. Mm -hmm. the, the only thing that we've done is uh, as we start to see a little bit more as the story unfolds, we want to make sure that her performance um, shows a little bit more of the softer side of her. Um, and I'm sure Christine is. Happy yeah. to talk about that. I, I, I'm happy. And, you know, Ikora, her last Fender performance at the end of the D2 campaign, she says, if losing my light was a test, I think I failed. So now that the Traveler is awake and she has her light back, as yeah. do all the Guardians, Everybody. I want to put that one to rest, um, <laughs> she is starting to explore what she needs to be and what she needs to be to become better. And part of that is exploring who she is besides just a weapon, besides mm -hmm. just a guardian, mm -hmm. besides just a leader. And that's exploring who she is a human. And that means having a friend. She hasn't had a lot of friends. She hasn't had a lot of people she can trust. But mm -hmm. the player is one of those people. Mm -hmm. so. Nice. Yeah. And uh, if uh, Ikora had a favorite pupil, mm -hmm. uh, he's also got well, maybe not a favorite follower. I don't mm -hmm. even know if, Osor if Osiris knows he has followers. Uh, he knows, but, you know, he doesn't like the celebrity aspect. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, <laughs> we've, uh, we've seen Brother Vance before. Mm -hmm. uh, even, if, uh, even if we never uh, participated in the trials of Osiris, this mm -hmm. was a person who held vigil in the reef and, and trained people to perhaps you know, help fight to find Osiris someday. Mm -hmm. uh, Brother Vance plays a, a prominent role in this expansion. He does. He is in, um, he's in our social area, which we will get into in a little bit. But mm -hmm. also, Vance is a little different from the one we saw in Destiny 1. If Vance in Destiny 1, 1 was somebody who was hoping to someday maybe find the right guardian who could go and bring back this person that he's studied and learned about and wrote about and you know but never really met Vance in Curse of Osiris is like a guy who knows that he is the the gate is open the signs are coming into place 
he is going to see Osiris on Thursday afternoon, and it's Tuesday, and he is so excited, yeah. he doesn't know what to do. This is the <laughs> second time throughout the course of Destiny that somebody who has trained you in the Crucible gets to step to the forefront and say, what you have been preparing for has come to a point, and yes. it's time to get down to real business. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And, uh, of course, uh, we have some... Uh, new destinations. We're going to go to new places where we will encounter these characters. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's jump into that. Uh, of course, we are going to go to Mercury. To Mercury, of course. Uh, so this, uh, this image is what we call a postcard, yes? This yes. is sort of the, this is the touch point. This is the, basically the, the artistic right. keystone that influences all of our design when we build a new world. Absolutely correct. Um, when, when we're thinking about a new destination like Mercury, um, we come up with a variety of pillars yep. of of, of a phrase or a word that tries to encapsulate what we're trying to achieve there. Um, and one of the big ones that we have for, for Mercury is mystery. Um, we, we teased it and we showed a little bit of it. You had a glimpse of it when you were in the lighthouse mm -hmm. um, back in D1. Um, and everybody always wanted to understand what it was like to be out there. Um, so as, as you start to look in, in at this concept um, and, other, uh, and the other locations on the present version of Mercury, we use that as uh, a way to look for uh, to, create, to create mystery, to create wonder, to create uh, a sense of discovery of what's around every corner. Mm -hmm. um, we use that as our guiding touchstone for how we look at our environments, uh, how we create the landscape, how we create the props that exist inside of it, yeah. um, lighting, environment effects, all those things come back to that guiding picture. Mm -hmm. Christine, uh, in terms of the chronology and the lore, mm -hmm. Mercury was a, a lush garden, garden world. world. Yes. And then the Vex show up, up and ruin mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. So they've turned this into their own machine world, essentially, right. yeah? And they've hollowed out the core of the planet. Um, that is something we're going to talk about why they did that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And <laughs> that's one of the mysteries that we'll solve. And then this is obviously uh, an in-game view of that environmental landscape. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, so, just, just a piece of Mercury right here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and what you're seeing is uh, that's, that's the gate uh, that actually takes you to the infinite forest. And that's something that Christine was talking about just mm -hmm. a couple seconds ago. Yeah. Um, their reality engine. Their reality yes. engine. So this is an opportunity for us not only to be able to, as a player, to be able to see uh, Mercury on the surface and where we're at right now and today, but then also by venturing through the gate, you can start to explore uh, the, the mechanisms that is the machine and then also past, present, and future of Mercury. So this is a concept of the infinite forest. Uh, this piece of concept art was created by who? This one is also Ryan Gitter. Ryan Gitter, hard at work making awesome stuff for us. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, so this is their reality engine. These are their machines. Uh, this is essentially how they jump through time and space and, and look at every possible eventual outcome mm -hmm. of everything that they do. Right. They, they, I, I, I call it trying to find the equation for, fu for, for the future. Yeah. And then once we look at it in game, uh, this is uh, sort of a jumping off point, and then you can make your way through that landscape. Mm -hmm. uh, as the Vex move through this space, and as they tackle uh, every different possible reality, uh, what is that? How does that manifest itself physically in that environment? So, great, quick, great, great, fabulous question. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that we wanted to make sure early on, uh, when we're starting to think about how we want to interact with the Vex, and 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 get into their lore, their ecology. We want to be able to expose players not only to the present Vex that everybody's ever, that they've seen and they've fought against for, uh, for quite some time, um, but this now is an opportunity for us to dig deeper into the precursors and the descendants, which are also going to be facing in Curse of Osiris. Um, the this landscape that you're also seeing, um, I I think it's really important to talk about how the gameplay unfolds inside of the Infinite Forest. Mm -hmm. um, it's the way that we built it. It's uh, the first time you play through this mission, you'll run through it and you'll experience certain foes and certain objectives. Mm -hmm. And if you were to run through that, that, that mission again, odds are that space is not going to play out the exact same way. The space is different. The enemies that you may face is different. different. Right. Would you say that this is procedurally generated? Absolutely not. No. So this is, this is lovingly crafted. Um, very intelligently assembled mm -hmm. uh, in a way that we can create new and unique experiences every time you come into the infinite, into the infinite mm -hmm. forest. Yeah, and, and we've always art directed every square foot that you've encountered. Every in decorator, right. every plant, yes. every, every budding flower. But this landscape has different combinations of set pieces and enemies to fight, so it gives you a lot of different infinite combinations for experiences. Hence the infinite forest. Hence mm -hmm. the infinite.
infinite forest. Right. And right. as we move through this space, uh, we can also experience the Vex manipulation of time. Mm -hmm. uh, it's my understanding that we can show future Mercury. We can totally show future Mercury. Okay, so this is what this is the Mercury of the future. What yes. what are we looking at here? So so this is this is dark. This is deep into the future. We call this we we refer to this picture as the dark future. Okay. Um, <clears throat> this is where the sun has gone dead. Uh, you're, what you see in the foreground there is the lighthouse. After like a, a tremendous amount of entropy, there is no life on the planet. The only thing that remains is Vex. There's the no life anywhere. No light. No dark. Just Vex. Just Vex. Just yeah. nothing to light the way, but mm -hmm. just a sea of red vexed eyeballs. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a piece of concept art created by? Uh, this is by Dorje. Dorje Bellbrook. Mm -hmm. Man, yeah. stellar. Wonderful, wonderful work. And then this is what it looks like inside of the game. Right. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the lighthouse in the dark future. So it doesn't look the same. No, it's certain. Oh, look at that. Yeah, it's completely just busted down. And uh, good segue. The lighthouse in the dark future is not a hospitable environment. No, it's not. Uh, but the lighthouse of the now, yes. which is really what this is all about, uh, is uh, different than we may have remembered it. Yep. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it looks like it's uh, a little bit more uh, hospitable to company yeah. and visitors. A little more lived in. Um, so let, let me tell you a little bit about it. Um, first off, uh, every, like, for, for, did you manage to make it in Trials of Osiris? Did you make it to the lighthouse? Uh, shout out to Pope Bear and Ann Boo. Uh, they took me to the lighthouse once. <laughs> once. I was, I was not hired for my thumb skills. Um, how about yourself? Uh, yeah, I've, I've, managed, I've managed to make it there. Yeah. Um, my, my fire team's been my two boys, okay. uh, Alex and Griffin. Um, yeah. they, they managed to help me get there. Yeah. They're better players than I am. No, well, it's good of you to give your son's backpack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm and Christine? I've seen YouTube videos of people who made it to the lighthouse. And I'm sure there are many people <laughs> watching this stream right now for whom that has been their only exposure to the lighthouse as well, yeah. is, and, is YouTube videos. And PvP, I am a target. Okay. Well, we're all targets in <laughs> yeah. PvP. It's just a question of how hard a target are you. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, for everyone watching and everyone who will play Curse of Osiris on December 5th, you're all invited to the lighthouse. Uh, as you said, Osiris's followers are very anxious about mm -hmm. the signs pointing toward his return, so they've thrown open the doors and lit the candles. And they're mm -hmm. ready for it to happen. Okay. <laughs> For, so for us, like this is this is a really big deal for us to be able to have everybody get a chance to go to the lighthouse. Um, this is this is an opportunity for us to to pay off what people have only dreamed about going to. Um, we also we I want to call out real quick that this is the space that um, you're going to be able to uh, start a lot of quests. This acts as like the hub for most of Mercury. Okay. Um, you're going to start a lot of your missions here. Um, you're going to want to kind of resolve some of your missions here. There's a lot of mysteries within the lighthouse for you to explore, mm -hmm. um, and uh, there's a few people for you to interact with. Well, I have a controller in my hands, so let's go there now, shall we? Let's do it. Yep. All right. We uh, break net live, and we are going to the lighthouse, and here we are. So as you can see, uh, if you've been to the lighthouse before, it is a changed environment. Mm -hmm. uh, a little you friendlier. You can't fall to your death. <laughs> That's very kind of you. Yeah. Uh, we've you know, kicked out some, some carpets, we've lit some candles, and uh, this is a functional space. Uh, I am armed with a weapon, but uh, I mean this gentleman no harm. The scent of ozone. Come closer, warlock. So much like our interaction with other in-destination uh, vendors, uh, Brother Vance has uh, assumed a, a functional role as somebody who will guide us and reward us. Absolutely. Uh, he, he sits within the lighthouse, um, much like uh, Failsafe, you know, as, and, and Devrim. Yes, mm -hmm. um, and others. The, and there you go. And this, this will be an opportunity for you not only to learn a little bit more about Vance, but then also how Vance sees Osiris mm -hmm. and, and his eagerness for his return. Yep. And uh, we can see here that uh, oh. Vance has his own engram. Yep. And uh, the, uh, the levels have been raised. The levels have been raised. Uh, player level is up, we're bringing it up to 25. Okay. And your light level will go to 330 um, as a soft, and 335 if you've got your mods. Okay. Very good. And uh, we will be taking a look at all of the gear that you'll be able to pull out of this engram in the third stream in the series. Uh, although, for the time being, uh, I figure there's no harm in me showing off the warlock gear that you'll be able to add to your collection. And uh, this dresses me up as a proper follower in the Order of Osiris. I'm looking uh, Egyptian and badass myself right now. 
And uh, just to take in a little bit more of the space here, uh, we can see that Brother Vance is uh, very much the scholar, very much the, uh, the seeker, if you will. Mm -hmm. A little obsessed. Just a little. <laughs> or a lot. Uh, we prefer the term captivated. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, the entire space has been redressed. Mm -hmm. And we, we, all, we've, we've, we want to make sure that we, we want to tell that story visually as well, that, yeah. that not only has Vance come back, but then other followers of Osiris have started to come back yes, as well. Yes, yeah, we got a gathering of his followers right here. Mm -hmm. And uh, these two fellows right here, mm -hmm. near yeah, and yeah. dear to my heart. Look at that, they're exos. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Looking mean, fellows. Uh, this is a place of study. This is a place of learning. Uh, these guys have more books than the speaker. The too soon? Uh, maybe. Uh, so the, uh, the gate there is live. Uh, mm -hmm. We will go through there in just a moment, but there's more to look at here in this space Sure. as I move through slowly and deliberately like a cinematographer. Uh, here's something I'd like for you to tell me a little bit about, Dave, but I think when we have Dan Miller, uh, the game director for Curse of Osiris in the Hot Seat next week, mm -hmm. I think he can give us a little bit more context what is this installation right here? So uh, this is basically a tracker or a history marker for some of the optional activities that you're going to be able to have as a player mm -hmm. at the end of campaign. Okay. Um, the uh, if if you actually look at your your hand cannon that you got in your hand right now. Yep. Um, that's actually one of the destiny theme uh, destination themed weapons that is like. Basically, the notion is older weapons that Osiris has grabbed, taken, and modified using Vex technology. Yeah. Um, you actually have an opportunity to to go and adventure for. Uh, the ability to forge these types of weapons. Okay. And that, that object that you're looking at right now, that actually shows you the markers of all the different ones that you've been able to create to date. Yeah, so we've got a couple of glyphs or runes or some sort of holograms here that are active. And uh, each of those nodes represents a different weapon? Absolutely does. And uh, I will acquire these throughout the campaign, after the campaign? A How does after the campaign. Work? And, the, and it's, it's all optional quests that you can do as a player. And so each one, each one is, is represented by a quest? Yes. And I can see here that you've, uh, you seem to have hacked into some VEX technology and uh, wired it into this installation over here. Yep, we call that the forge. That's actually where you'll take uh, all your elements and yeah. you bring them together and you're able to forge these weapons. Look at that, we're worse than the fallen. Okay. Uh, and then uh, as we move over here, we can see that, uh, as always, the lighthouse has a lovely view. And uh, you'd mentioned before that there's always been a player curiosity to leave the confines of this space. What's on the surface, and yeah. See what's beyond. out there. See what's out there. So this is a good opportunity to satisfy that curiosity. Destiny yeah. has always been about exploring. We should go through the gate. We should go through the gate. Here we go. So uh, we're going to see what's on the other side. And here we go. We are going to visit Mercury for the first time. Welcome to Mercury. As you can see, I have a fire team waiting for me. <laughs> right here, we have a Titan dressed similarly in some fabulous. This is our destination theme gear. Okay, so this is this is the gear that I'll earn by uh, playing the campaign and be being a willing combatant, and then. Uh, and there's my favorite. I play a hunter. Oh yeah, are we playing favorites now. <laughs> well then, we have to have another warlock. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'll, I'm, I'm all the warlock you need today. So, they they know the rules. If I'm going to sit in the chair and hold a controller, I get to be the warlock. Uh, all right. <laughs> So th this is our public space. So this is this is the space that, uh, that exists in the present time. Mm -hmm. um, this is where uh, public events will occur, lost sectors, all the things that people have have loved yeah. to find and explore uh, on EDZ and other places inside of Destiny 2. Um, we offer the all exact same things on Mercury as well. Okay. And I can see that the uh, Cabal are paying us a visit. Mm -hmm. uh, what's Mercury up? Mercury is the closest planet to the Almighty, and there are survivors um, after the Guardian went and kind of wrecked the place. Yeah. Um, so they have come to Mercury. All right. Let's see what else is on Mercury. Uh, gentlemen, if you'd lead the way and take us on a walking or perhaps even shooting tour of the yeah. environment. It is a bit of a hot zone, so be careful. All right. Weapons hot. Fangs out. You are green to engage. Let's see what they got. Uh, so... Yeah, like as you promised, we got some Cabal stragglers through here. 
Now, you'd mentioned that, uh, you know, we're going to find all the things that, uh, you know, make a Destiny destination what it is. Mm -hmm. uh, you'd mentioned Lost Sectors. Yep. Um, you know, obviously, there are chests that we can open up. Public events. Public events. We have, uh, this is a pretty big deal for us as well. Uh, we have a, a bespoke public event. Um, it is handcrafted for the space and integrated into uh, the public space. Okay. Uh, a rather big public event, from what I've heard. Uh, it's, it's our largest it's debate. Uh, probably want to watch out. Yeah, watch out for that next milk. Radial uh, fluid. fluid, please. Yes, come on, <laughs> come on. You're, you're sitting next to your next to your narrative. You got to be on point here, man. Uh, so, uh, as they have uh, engaged the enemy, whether we like it or not, we've stepped into a war with the cabal. Mm -hmm. uh, if you take a peek, yeah, yeah, take a peek, and if you can not get shot at the same time, but if you look up over to your right. Yep. Um, not only will, well, see, let me get a bird's eye yep, view. Yep, yep. Let me, let me go up. That's a lot. There you go. There Keep me go. safe up here, boys. I'm trying to lead a tour group. So not only are we at, like, this is again, right after the campaign of D2. Yep. So the Almighty is out there in the horizon. Yep. Okay. Um, and then if you look up there, that is actually the lighthouse. Yeah, we okay. can see the lighthouse from the outside for the mm -hmm. first time. And then uh, very close proximity to our sun. Mm -hmm. And uh, what remains of the Almighty is still in the skybox. Yep. All right, cool. Uh, Great opportunity to get a tan. Yes, yes, exactly. Or get burnt to a crisp. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to jump down here. We'll, we will continue our reconnoiter. Uh, I'll let my buddies take point, as I always do. So, we're not, so what you're starting to approach now, that's the, that's the gate that allows you to enter the infinite forest okay. and ultimately explore all the different times that have uh, the capstones to the past, present, and future. Awesome. And uh, you'd mentioned uh, the Lost Sectors before, but in keeping with the themes of uh, mystery, mm -hmm. uh, my understanding is that you're not necessarily marking those on the map. We're not, we're not going to show them on the map until uh, after, uh, after your campaign is all complete and give you an opportunity to find them all on your own without yeah. any assistance. This is usually how I enjoy PvP, through the, through the grace of my fire team. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. There we go. I'll help. I helped. Oh, oh we got oh. we got a man. Oh, we got two oh. down. Need a respawn. Don't wipe. <laughs> there we go. All right, <laughs> let's uh, let's move along. I'm going to uh, speed through this environment. And we're going to go up to the gate to the infinite forest. Yeah, and again, early, like early on, we want to make sure that uh, any, anybody that played the PvP maps down on Mercury, that all this stuff felt familiar. Um, and if you harken back even to like uh, Black Garden days, um, some of the statues and things like that, we want to pull that idea and those concepts yep. forward um, and, and make this place feel uh, familiar, yet unique and full of mystery. All right. We'll take one last look at Mercury. Why and uh, then we are going to go through this gate, which will bring us into the infinite forest. Mm -hmm. I am now deep within the planet of Mercury. Yes. The, the entire inf the infinite forest is pretty much fills the core of the planet. The, the Vex came in, they took it over, they hollowed it out, and they built this. And it, they keep building. I, I, from a, from a, an aesthetic perspective, it was... It was a goal of ours to make sure that we could create something that felt like it's set outside of time and space. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, we, we come back and look at that, that postcard, and now that you're here, boots on the ground, actually looking at the space, we wanted to make sure it felt surreal, it felt uh, uh, dreamlike. Well, as my fire team forges ahead, I'm going to park right here, just so that we can take a look at the destination. Sure. Uh, we can see uh, some of these different installations here. We call those trees. Okay. Uh, those, uh, the infinite forest has to have trees. The forest yes. needs trees. And, and what, what would the Vex consider a tree? So, and uh, you can see that uh, there's sort of a different aesthetic for some of the different trees. This right. one's mm -hmm. pristine. This uh, one is not. That one is not. These, these are all different trees that allow you, as a player, to go to different times. Mm -hmm. So as you, like the one on the right that you were just looking at, uh, that will take you to the future, to the dark future. Um, the one that's just slightly off to the left, that's one that's going to take you to another version of the past, yeah. uh, to the present. And then the one that's pristine that you're looking at right now um, is 
deep in the past when Mercury okay. was a lush garden planet. And uh, that is one of the things that we are leaving for player exploration. We're not going to show you Mercury of the past not today. Yet. Not yet. By your command. Please, and thank you. You can see we are, in fact, inside the planet. Uh, there is no sky here, uh, only the uh, natural ceiling of uh, the planet's crust, I mm -hmm. guess you would say. Mantle, maybe? Mantle, the crust. Mm -hmm. I really needed to pay more attention in geology, <laughs> but I knew that wasn't the best possible future for myself. So much like the Vex, uh, I, made, I made a command decision there. Uh, fantastic. Well, uh, I am going to take us back to orbit. I'm going to uh, abandon my fire team. And uh, they'll be yeah. OK. They'll, and we welcome two other developers onto the hot seat. Awesome. Thanks, Thanks so much. Thank you. So let's take a look at the director. Uh, let's open this right now. I uh, just want to give you uh, a brief tour of some of the different things that you can expect to find as part of Curse of Osiris. Uh, the first thing that we will take a look at is uh, the strike menu. As you can see here, the Heroics Strikes playlist, the Heroic Strikes playlist rather, is coming back. A uh, great source of cooperative fun with yourself and two friends, uh, as well as a good source of rewards. Uh, you can also see that we do have a uh, Mercury destination that we're adding as a node to the director. And uh, thanks to uh, the almighty, uh, Mercury uh, does not have all of its structural integrity. Uh, it's been uh, you know, devouring the planet as fuel. Uh, thankfully, it takes a long time to devour a planet, so there's enough left for us to explore. Uh, I also want to take this stream as an opportunity to answer what has been a question since the original reveal of Curse of Osiris at Paris Games Week. Uh, we have made the promise of new raid content, and uh, there have been a number of questions as to what exactly that means. And to answer that question, uh, we have brought onto the couch two other members of our team. Uh, Stuart Monsky, this is your first ever Bungie stream. Hey, it's good to be here. Yeah, great to have you, <laughs> man. Um, the Leviathan menu here. And uh, as we look at how this menu has changed, uh, what we can see is that the original raid is still a component of the experience, of course, mm -hmm. uh, but we've added a new node. And this is what we're calling uh, a raid lair. Uh, the yep. Leviathan Eater of Worlds is the name of the activity. Uh, if you could summarize for me, what is a raid lair? Uh, a raid lair is a brand new six player raid activity. Mm -hmm. Uh, in this raid layer, we're going back to the Leviathan. It's an entirely new set of encounters, new puzzles, new loot, completely new places to explore. You got to remember this ship eats planets. That's how big this thing is. Big place. Yeah. Lots of different places to explore. And then we have a brand new final boss for you to fight. Okay. And um, then uh, we also have the original raid. Uh, you can see here that the recommended power for the Leviathan is now 300. Mm -hmm. We're bringing everything up. We want to make sure that we have a variety of raid content to play. Uh, we don't want to deprecate anything. So if you're a guardian that's reached your maximum potential, uh, this becomes a challenge that you can enjoy again and again and again. If mm -hmm. you're a guardian who decides to join us in Curse of Osiris and you're looking for new challenges, uh, you're taking us back to the Leviathan and uh, we get to face a new bad guy. Mm -hmm. Yep, and it doesn't matter if you've completed the Leviathan uh, main raid uh, either. You can play this anytime you want. Separate activity, yep, separate requires activity. six players. Um, what is the scope of a raid lair if you were to try to size it up? So it's not as lengthy as the original Leviathan, mm -hmm. but you know there's still a, a boss and then all the challenges leading up to them. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's going to be a pretty sizable addition. Yeah, yeah. and it's, it's no less challenging or less fun than any other raid we've made. This raid is a ton of fun. We've been playing a lot internally. It's extremely challenging. You're gonna die a lot. You're, we're gonna, okay. You're gonna right. die. A is lot. that that's the challenge? <laughs> it's you're, very you're gonna die yeah. a lot, guardians. Uh, so hopefully that challenge is accepted. Um, so uh, let's see. What else can we say about this? Uh, we we guide the Leviathan. We will also guide mm -hmm. the raid lair. Um, I'm with your permission. I'm gonna launch this activity. Let's do Sneak it. Sneak peek. All that's right. <laughs> uh, we'll take a look at that before we go down. Um, if we survive. After dying a lot, uh, what are we going to earn? New armor, new weapons, new cosmetics, all at a higher light level. 
Okay. Yep. And we should also note that you mentioned we're bringing up the original Leviathan raids, so those rewards are going to get brought up as well, too. So you're going to have a variety of raid content to pick from each week. Some nights you might feel like a longer raid, other nights you might only have time for a raid layer. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then, uh, let's see, will there be a prestige mode for yep. the raid layer? Uh, we're going to have a prestige mode. Uh, it's brutal. The the sandbox difficulty is way up. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, you're going to die hard. a lot. <laughs> you're going to you're going to die a lot. Okay. So, um, talk to me about what motivated the team. Actually, let's let's come back and let's let's. I want to take a look at this one more time because there actually is something that I failed to call out here. Um, let's take a look at the uh, menu one more time. What motivated us to handle raid encounters like this? Well, uh, we wanted to make more raids, number one. Uh, mm -hmm. We enjoy raiding the whole team raids together. Uh, we wanted more stuff to do. Yep. And we thought we could make uh, a whole bunch of new encounters, new mechanics, new puzzles for people. We wanted to make new bosses. Okay. Yeah, it, it comes down to variety. Uh, we wanted a variety of encounters, like you know, more puzzly raids, more sandbox-focused raids. Mm -hmm. And we also wanted to have uh, variety in the amount of time commitment yeah. because like you were mentioning earlier, sometimes it's hard to get a full group of six people together for three hours or, or so. Or however uh, long. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, in the uh, first year of Destiny, uh, we, uh, well, ever since the first year of Destiny, we've seen one major raid a year. Yep. Uh, but in the first year of Destiny, we obviously had the Vault of Glass. And then in the first expansion, the Dark Below, we had Crota's End. And then in the House of Wolves, we had... Prison builders, Nothing. but no raid. But no Prison raid, builders. which was uh, an interesting moment. Um, with this, I can see that we have uh, we have uh, a node here um, that's blank. What are you going to fill that with? That's <coughs> excuse me. Uh, uh, that's going to be the uh, second raid layer, uh, and it's going to be an expansion too. Okay, so uh, we will have an additional raid layer added to the game with expansion two. Uh, we're forecasting that for spring, if you're keeping track. Uh, this enables us to create content that people, that raiders can enjoy more frequently, like you said, giving mm -hmm. them more variety of activity and making sure that we are uh, satisfying that urge, satisfying that, uh, you know, that, that hunger for challenge yes. and dying a lot more frequently. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so, uh, as promised, we're going to launch this activity. Uh, so we now take you back to the Leviathan. If you're a hardcore raider that wants to go in blind again, Spoiler alert, uh, I'm not going to show you how to play this raid, but I'll give you uh, some sense of the first steps that you might take uh, in this activity. And uh, you guys, uh, have you been play testing this activity with uh, Team Velveeta? Oh yeah, yes. Team Velveeta. Are, are, they are the best of the best we have at Bungie, and we use them sort of as our metric. They're a lot better than the raid team. Yep. So we try to balance around. Better than some of us. Yeah, yeah I suck. So uh, here we are. If you're, uh, if you're a hardcore raider in Destiny, uh, this environment uh, is not strange to you. Uh, we are aboard the Leviathan in orbit around Nessus. And this planet-devouring machine, this space-faring killer of worlds, is a big place. Yeah. Takes a big place, takes a big ship to eat a planet. Yeah, and so far we've only been to the palace on the top of the ship, and this thing eats planets. There's a lot of different places that we can go. Mm -hmm. And so we thought, hey, let's go back to Leviathan. We've got more stories to tell. We have totally new places to go. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to go somewhere else this time. Yeah, you still haven't been down below. You've no. seen a little bit under the city, but yes. that ship is massive. Into the belly of the beast, as it were. Yes, mm -hmm. the original name for it before we named an achievement that. <laughs> okay. So now we are uh, going to investigate the Eater of Worlds. Uh, in the uh, original raid in Destiny 2, uh, we did this ascent. And uh, where are we going this time? You're going down. Yep. Down into the belly, like you said. Uh, so we don't want to show too much. We can maybe take him in the door, but it, all right, not not too much further than that. But in the immortal words of Kevin Flynn, that is a big door. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm gonna park it right here. So this is, if you are a raider and if you are ready for new challenges, this is what awaits you. Uh, you'll open this door. You'll descend into a brand new raid lair, yep. and uh, we'll see what awaits them. 
Uh, will you guys be uh, piling into our theater to uh, to watch as people undertake this for the first time? Always. Uh, yeah, okay. It's a party every time we do it. Yeah, it's, it's great. <laughs> we love it. When will this go live? Will this be live to uh, the first fire team that can finish the campaign and dive in, or are we going to illuminate a starting line? Uh, it's going to be a starting line, as always. We want to treat the competition with respect. So we'll, we'll shoot uh, the starting pistol, we'll spectate, we'll, we'll yeah. cheer for the winners. Yep. All right. It'll be shortly after DLC launch. Uh, I think we'll talk about the exact date later. Okay. When, uh, when we're ready to tell you about the exact date, we'll set those expectations. Uh, we'll give everyone an opportunity to...